Welcome back, everybody. Our next keynote speaker is someone we have grown to know throughout the last year as the pandemic affected our economic lives. On multiple occasions, Minister Melanie Jolie reached out to our chamber and our business community to hear our concerns, our needs, and at times, our frustrations as we grappled with the pandemic. We're so pleased to have her join us again today for Recovery Road. L'Honorable Mélanie Jolie a été élue à la Chambre des communes pour la première fois en 2015. En tant que ministre, elle a travaillé à faire la promotion de la culture canadienne et plus de valoir accroître les visibilités des secteurs touristiques du Canada. She has also worked to safeguard Canada's two official languages while promoting the use of French in Canada and around the world, including in the digital sphere. Prior to entering federal politics, Minister Jolie founded the Vrai Changement pour Montréal party and ran for mayor of that city in 2013 under its banner. Minister Jolie holds an honors Bachelor of Law from the Université de Montréal and a Magistre Juris in European and Comparative Law from Oxford. She is the author of Changing the Rules of the Game, in which she shares her vision for public policy and civic engagement. She was named a, global, a young global leader by the World Economic Forum. In the current government, she is Minister of Economic Development and Official Languages. And as part of her portfolio, she oversees the work of the Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency. Maintenant, je vous invite à vous rejoindre moi pour accueillir l'honorable Melanie Jolie. Minister Jolie. Merci, John. Thank you so much. It's great to see you, even though virtually, but it's always great to connect. Um, hi, everyone. Um, it's, a, it's, it's an honor to be uh, back uh, virtually in Moncton and to have the chance to talk to you uh, about the road to recovery, but also what we've done as a government since the beginning of the pandemic and the economic crisis. But before going into that, I just wanted to highlight the contribution of many people uh, that are extremely important to make that happen, including Jeanette petit taylor who unfortunately uh, is caught in a uh, parliament, uh, parliamentary committee as we speak, uh, but she's been a very strong voice for Moncton and Dieppe, as well as Dominique Leblanc, Pat Finnegan, and, and many of my colleagues, uh, which I uh, really uh, like to, to, to work with. And, uh, and of course, I know that virtually, uh, on this Zoom is present uh, my good friend Elena Lockhart, who used to be my parliamentary secretary when I was in charge of the tourism sector. Well, I'm still in charge of the tourism sector, but uh, we worked a lot together. And, and I know she's a very strong voice uh, for uh, the people in her community. Um, Frank McKenna, I think, is uh, participating in events, John, a bit later today. That's uh, right. Fra Frank is a good friend, I would say even a mentor. So. Um, uh, I'm happy you guys will be able to uh, benefit from his wisdom uh, and also uh, Francis McGuire, obviously, who's the head of ACOA and who I have the chance to work uh, a lot with these days. So now let's start with a couple of numbers. Um, as we speak now, when we look at across the country, of all the dollars invested in fighting the pandemic and helping businesses and people directly, eight out to 10, so 80% of all the, the, the funding required to do that has been uh, offered by the federal government. And my team and I, when preparing for this important conference, we looked at the numbers for New Brunswick directly, John. And as of now, now, since the beginning of the pandemic, we invested as a federal government $3.4 billion only in New Brunswick. That is taking into account all the direct help for people through, for example, the different uh, uh, you know, benefits that are available to people that have lost their jobs or that become sick and that need to have uh, support. Um, that includes also direct support for businesses, including the wage subsidy, and also some key transfers uh, that were sent to the province uh, to deal with, uh, with the pandemic. So uh, when we look even at this summer, 
uh, 70,000 New Brunswickers were uh, benefiting from the wage subsidy. So basically businesses using the wage subsidy to employ them and keep the jobs uh, in, in the province. Um, now, in our portfolio, so directly in ACOA, usually the budget of ACOA for all the four Atlantic provinces is $250 million. During the pandemic, we doubled that budget. It's now at 500 million. And for New Brunswick specifically, it passed from 70 million to 140 million. So it shows how much people at COA have been busy, but not only that, that there was a demand and, uh, and the, the impact of a COA on the ground has been extremely uh, helpful and I would say important as well. Um, now, since the, the conference is all about recovery, um, I think that what we've been able to do since the beginning is through all that help, we've been able to limit the economic scarring. Um, that way, our businesses are able to deal with their liquidity issues and at the same time are able to continue to mitigate risks as risks are everywhere right now. And what we will want to do is once the pandemic is over, is to invest between 3 to 4% of our GDP. So that's between 80 and $100 billion dollars to make sure that not only are, do our businesses um, are, are able to take risks again and, and really invest and innovate and be more competitive, but also that we are preparing for the future and that we're really uh, you know, helping um, our economy, but our society in a way that we can uh, bit by bit be carbon neutral. We know we have uh, uh, definitely a, a, an objective of becoming carbon neutral in the country in 2050. And as we all know, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and President Joe Biden had a conversation this week. We know that our uh, neighbors in the South are definitely uh, focused on this green recovery. We will do so as well. And we will make sure that this creates a lot of opportunities in Atlantic Canada. So, um, and of course, John, you would know, and uh, our viewers today would know, New Brunswick is really leading the country when it comes to recovery. Um, the province is at 99% of, of uh, pre-pandemic employment levels. Of course, that includes also the wage subsidy, but still, it means that people that had jobs have jobs. Um, and in that sense, it is really good news. And I look forward to hearing what are the good ideas, uh, because definitely a lot of provinces will be looking at what's going on in New Brunswick. Um, also, the Atlantic Immigration Program has had a lot of benefits for New Brunswick. And through ACOA, we will want to continue to invest in this Atlantic Immigration Program. Finalement, je pense qu'il y a quelques, quelques aspects qui vont être clés à la relance. Certainement, le fait qu'on euh, on on mette l'accent sur les petites et moyennes entreprises qui ont été très affectées par la pandémie, la numérisation des entreprises, le fait aussi, je parlais tantôt d'économie verte, donc d'aider cette transition écologique-là, d'aider nos entrepreneurs à, à utiliser des des énergies plus vertes ou à diminuer leur impact environnemental ou à développer de nouvelles solutions vertes. Um, et puis, ben, j'ai déposé mon plan en matière de langue officielle récemment. On va vouloir se concentrer sur l'immigration francophone au Nouveau-Brunswick aussi. So what I've just said in English, John, is uh, we know that um, our small businesses uh, have been affected by, by uh, the... Uh, the uh, the pandemic and so we will want as a federal government to do more for small businesses in this recovery usually the federal government is not necessarily uh the level of government that is really in contact with small businesses it's much more at the municipal or the provincial level but during the what we're going through we became a key partner a key investor sometimes savior for small businesses, we will want to continue to do that because there's no economic recovery without our small business being able to thrive and, well, to survive and thrive. Um, a lot of it will see, will also be linked to the capacity of these small businesses and industry in general to digitize them, themselves. 
to make sure that they can become more competitive and develop new streams of revenues. Um, and, and finally, I, definitely uh, the green economy will be important. And so uh, creating green jobs, helping uh, through the Atlantic Loop, um, good investments and, and helping definitely the future of, of New Brunswick when it comes to sustainable uh, energy. So these would be the things uh, that I wanted to highlight. Um, we've been there since the beginning of the pandemic. We were there, we're here now, and we will be there in the future. And for the rest, I know, John, you have tough questions for me, so I'm ready. I do. Uh, thanks for that very much, uh, Minister Jolie. Uh, and I'd urge everyone who's uh, tuned in today to pose your questions you might have for the Minister Jolie using the chat function at the bottom of the screen. I know we have some that have already uh, popped in. Nous tenterons de répondre à autant de questions qui possible à la fin de notre discussion. So to start off, Minister Jolie, I've described to others the experience <clears throat> that the Chamber has had during the pandemic, a bit like running a marathon with no visible finish line. <laughs> and can you tell us, without breaking cabinet confidentiality, of mm -hmm. course, what it's been like to be around the cabinet table trying to make the best decisions to support individuals and businesses? Um, well, I think that what happened very quickly during the pandemic at the beginning, even when Parliament stopped, um, uh, um, you know, to, to, to decided to sh we decided to shut down the Parliament for a, for a couple of weeks. Um, there was the prime minister created the uh, COVID cabinet committee. So really that was, we were, and I, I ha happened to sit on that committee, we were eight ministers pretty much that were in charge of dealing with the pandemic. So of course, a lot of it was at the beginning, the um, health crisis. So uh, really, you know, finding the PPE, uh, trying to make sure that the, uh, we were dealing with provinces and territories as they were rolling out their plans for their own health sectors, healthcare sectors, uh, bit by bit buying vaccines and, uh, and, and basically doing everything that we thought was right based on the information we had, you know. Uh, on the other side, I would say I was much more involved in everything in line with the, uh, uh, you know, the support to people and, and the economy. And that's why, John, we spoke to each other <laughs> very quickly, uh, because as we all remember, for example, the wage subsidy at the beginning was was seven, was not at 75 percent. Uh, so my job was really to be on the ground and to talk to you, your members, uh, people across different chambers of commerce, across New Brunswick, across the Atlantic, across the country, and even do a lot of uh, information sharing. I remember being on a Zoom uh, in Alberta. There was 1,200 people uh, that were watching, and I was just explaining how the wage subsidy was working, uh, how the SIBA account, so the small businesses' loans were working, what was coming up, who they should be talking to. Um, so it was as if maybe it's because I, I used to be in municipal politics, but it was really being on the ground very quickly. And what happened is what I realized is sometimes uh, a lot of businesses didn't, you know, didn't fall, were falling through the cracks, didn't have access to the wage subsidy or the, for different reasons, uh, all good reasons. And so that's why through ACOA, we decided to find new solutions and that's how we came up with new programs. So it's been uh, I think at the beginning, it was uh, my analogy would be much more like war times. We were in the fog of war uh, and, and trying to, you know, uh, battle the virus. Uh, at the same time, bit by bit, the fog of war lifted. We understood what was the lay of the land and where we had to go next for our next battle. And at this point, I think that's how it's working. Uh, so we're able to plan better uh, than at the beginning, but there people are tired, people are anxious, and so we have to uh, keep keep ourselves at it and keep our optimism. Okay, thank you. Um, of all the government programs that have been launched to date, yeah. including some through your department and ACOA, 
Yep. Which one? Which one or ones do you think have made the biggest positive impact uh, for business? The wage subsidy. Yeah. You know, John, I remember being in the, in my apartment in Gatineau uh, with the Treasury Board President uh, Jaime Duclos. He's a fam very famous uh, economist, and it was the beginning of the crisis. And we were looking at scenarios of between 20 to 25 percent of unemployment. Uh, so we thought this is not, this won't be a recession. This can become a really big depression. So we thought we need to change our approach. We need to find ways for businesses to keep their employees. Um, and at the end of the day, for us at the federal government, if people go to an employment, we pay them anyways. So the idea was to really to keep that link between businesses and people for people to keep their job and eventually bounce back. So I would say that the SIBA accounts, the small businesses loans have been really, really transformational. And now through OCOA, it's, we've been helping businesses that are falling through the cracks, like, for example, through the triple RF fund. So the, um, we've been helping the fishery sector a lot with the Canadian seafood um, fund. Um, you know, there's been a, a couple of, com well, many companies that have been having access to it. Suncoast uh, Seafoods is, is an example. But also we've been able, through the great work of Francis McGuire and, and the team, to think about what can we do that will be a legacy, that will have an impact in time. And that's why we've worked a lot with, with uh, uh, some associations to make sure that our Main Street businesses had access to funds to digitize themselves. So in 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 um, in Moncton, it's 40 businesses that were able to get funding for these these types of uh, these types of, uh, of of work that this type of work that needs to be done. Okay, there's a there's a question that's come in uh, through the chat that also mirrors yeah. one that I had, and that relates to ongoing federal support. And the question actually came from the general manager of a major tourist attraction here. Mm -hmm. And he's asking about programs like the, the wage subsidy or the emergency rent subsidy, which as far as we know, it's, it's up to June. Are there, is the government considering extending some of these assistance measures to get us through the summer until everyone is vaccinated? So I have a soft spot for the tourism sector. I was the minister in charge of the tourism sector during the best year ever, 22.1 million international tourists coming to Canada. And now it's the worst since the begin since the Second World War. So I know a lot has to be done. And I know that the measures you're mentioning are key for uh, the, the sector. What I can tell you at this point is that we don't want to create a cliff effect of getting rid of our measures. And then basically businesses are again starting to lay off people. So uh, the idea is definitely to make sure that this is relevant, that is that basically these measures are in place for the right time. Um, at the same time, the there is a strong link between vaccination and and basically immunity uh, within the Canadian society uh, and these measures. So that's why also we will be taking timely decisions, but I hear, the importance of these measures, and I will always be on the sides of entrepreneurs who want them to make uh, to uh, as long as it's uh, as it's necessary. Mm -hmm. What, in concert with that, what is the the future of the Regional Relief and Recovery Fund? I, I know we have a federal budget coming up. Um, will do you think yeah. it will be extended past March thirty first? Yes, it will. Uh, we just uh, we just invested five hundred million dollars more in the fall economic statement. I just hope that uh, my colleagues at the opposition will help us pass the bill through the house because it's uh, there's still the, the, we've been waiting now for uh, many weeks. Uh, once that's uh, basically passed through, I'll be able to uh, flow the funds, uh, but it will be until June. Until June, okay. Um... So the, the tourism and hospitality sector, as you mentioned, is, has been among the hardest hit here in Atlantic Canada, for sure. Yep. Many operators in this sector say if the summer of 2021 is anything like 2020, they likely or might not survive. Mm -hmm. um, 
we know that some of the, the triple RRF funds are earmarked for that sector. Are yep. there other ways government and citizens can help? Yeah, so um, we've extended, like I said, the triple RRF through ACOA. Also, um, there's a new program, which is the HASCAP, so the highly uh, hit sectors. That's definitely helping many of uh, the hotels uh, and, uh, and tourism operators. Uh, so if you haven't heard about it, please go see your accountant and your bank, because this is uh, really at this point, it's not only um, loans, it's actually patient capital because it's, 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 uh, these are, it, it's over 10 years that you have to pay it back. So uh, uh, it's a very long term and at a very low interest, 4%. Um, but I would say also, John, that um, we will want Canadians to support Canadians. Uh, everybody in Canada knows that the tourism sector has been impacted and that they've been really hard hit. So there will be incentives to make sure that Canadians uh, can discover their country. That's the idea. Um, and we want to make sure that, uh, um, you know, we can not only support our small businesses and our tourism operators, but at the same time that uh, they, everybody can uh, discover their country at a time where nation building has never been so, so much important. Okay. I know the CEO of our local airport is on the call, uh, <laughs> Minister Jolie. Yeah. And obviously, you know, our airports have been dramatically impacted by a drop mm -hmm. in air travel. Yeah. And we certainly expect the major carriers will be in line for support and probably the major airports. What about those medium and smaller airports like those that operate in New Brunswick? So uh, we will have funding through the regional uh, airline transportation, uh, air transportation, sorry, initiative. Uh, this is $206 million over two years for six regional development agencies. So um, we've been already in contact with many of the smaller and, and, and medium-sized uh, regional airports. At the same time, uh, we're negotiating with uh, the big airline companies to do three things, to refund the travelers that had tickets with them, uh, to uh, reestablish regional routes, being in charge of economic development and particularly regional economic development, for me, this is extremely important. This is a question of keeping our regions uh, strong and and uh, and uh, attract, you know, that they can attract a lot of investors and investments, uh, and also um, making sure that these businesses can keep their the jobs, their job, you know, their employees. So um, we will be. Uh, making sure that we can announce the regional air transportation soon, but it has to be in line also with the negotiations that the airline uh, are have well, that we're having as a government with the airline companies. Okay, for the for the sake of time, I'm going to turn to some of the the audience questions now. Yeah, please go. And there there are a few questions around uh, the idea of direct federal support to either municipalities or businesses. And ACOA is a great example of that because yep. I think there's a feeling among some, and this is a kind of a, a growing issue of debate here in New Brunswick, that the province is either leaving money on the table or perhaps has is, is not been as willing a partner as we may wish. So it, are there ways that the federal government can connect more directly? Yeah. Well, that's why for me, John, it was important to highlight the $3.4 billion of the federal government because this has been a really, 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 um, well, actually, I think it's historic in terms of uh, transfer to the province and also support. And that doesn't take into account, like, for example, any other forms of transport that usually we would do at the federal level to the province of New Brunswick. Um, so definitely, when thinking of this road to recovery and stimulus package, um, I can clearly see a, an important role ACOA can play uh, because ACOA is the gold standard when it comes to uh, our regional uh, development agency. Everybody wants ACOA <laughs> across Canada. Um, so in that sense, um, you know, we definitely think that we will 
be in economic development mode. We, you know, right now we're in stabilizing the economy, uh, but we will be in a mode of creating jobs uh, in this, uh, you know, once the economy can clearly completely reopen because the, our health professionals will have told us that it is possible and that herd immunity is high enough. Uh, so based on that, uh, definitely we will want to work directly with businesses and with people directly also that we can work, yes, on the uh, offer, of, but also on, you know, on the demand that people can spend here and that by spending here while well, they're helping uh, Canadians and Canadian businesses. Okay. There was a question in the chat related to energy. I wonder if we could scroll uh, down to that. Uh or up to that, uh, there it is, yep, sorry. Um, first of all, the, the, the audience participant, thanks you for joining the summit, Minister Jolie. Pleasure. He, he says, energy drives Canada's economy and our biggest export, also true for NB. Canada has only two opportunities for meaningful contributions to a global reduction of greenhouse gases. One, exporting natural gas to Asia and displacing coal, two, exporting nuclear expertise, including SMRs, which are on the, on the horizon here in New Brunswick. Everything else is a rounding error uh, on GHG reductions. So the question is, what are we doing to make a real impact on global GHG emissions and ensuring Canada's energy sector thrives? So a uh, couple of things on that. Um, I know that nuclear power is important for, uh, for people in Atlantic Canada, particularly in New Brunswick. And that's why uh, my colleague Dominique Leblanc and I have been working actively on this file. And uh, there will be some good news coming for uh, regarding Multex soon. Uh, so um, ACOA has been involved and it will continue to be involved because it is in, in, in important for uh, our small nuclear reactors. Um, at the same time, uh, I have in my mandate letter to work with my colleague Dom Leblanc on the Atlantic Loop. And, uh, you know, there is also hydroelectricity that is important and it can be exported. Um, and so it is important for the um, uh, energy stability, let's say, of Atlantic Canada and New Brunswick and also in Nova Scotia. Uh, but also, uh, we've been we could talk about exporting hydroelectricity to the U.S. more. Um, this is something we, uh, we could uh, definitely work on with our fellow Americans because this is definitely clean energy. And at the same time, I think that there's many, many great small companies that are developing technologies uh, in Moncton and uh, all across Atlantic Canada that we should be looking at and investing it in. Um, and I haven't touched on the blue economy um, because, but there's definitely a lot to be uh, to be done to make sure that we can uh, seize the opportunity of uh, of our great oceans and everybody that is working in the field to make sure that we can develop new technologies and jobs. Right. I'm going to try to squeeze in one last question from the audience. <laughs> um, yeah. And it comes from uh, Mayor Yvon Lapierre of Ville de Dieppe. Oui. And it, it um, relates to uh, the, the talk about decentralization of federal services, yep. which was mentioned early in your government's mandate. That would really help spur economic recovery in the regions. And mm -hmm. I know one example here in Greater Moncton would be the reappearance of an IRCC presence, which was here until the, the Harper yep. era. Just yep. wondering if that's on the radar for government. Uh, well, a couple of things. Merci Yvon pour la question, elle est très pertinente. Um, we've been working with IRCC through ACOA uh, to, for the Atlantic Immigration Program. Um, and so, and it's, again, the best program when it comes to keeping uh, immigrants in our beautiful uh, regions of New Brunswick. And, you know, the idea was even to inspire ourselves from this Atlantic uh, Immigration Program to see where else in the country we could do that. So um, I think that definitely by increasing uh, the support to ACOA, that could help. But that being said, I hear uh, the idea. Merci Yvon pour l'idée. And I'll talk about it with, uh, with uh, my colleague Mendicino and, uh, 
and uh, who's the immigration minister and also with the minister of finance and the prime minister why not john why not yeah go go right up the ladder uh, minister julie <laughs> uh, so uh i'm afraid that's all the time we have for for questions today and i i really want to thank you minister jolie for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to be with us and to, to answer the concerns of uh, business owners and operators uh, here in, in New Brunswick. Um, Madame la Ministre, nous souhaitons pouvoir compter sur votre participation continue à la prise économique de notre région et des jours meilleurs à venir. Uh, and uh, so thanks very much again for your time. Uh, keep up the good work. And uh, we, I'm sure we'll be talking again uh, before our lives are back to normal. <laughs> Anytime, John. We need to work on this to make sure that uh, New Brunswick and New Brunswickers are able to uh, get all the benefits of, uh, you know, every, uh, of the support of, of the government and that it, it, that it has impact. We have a, like, a his, historic uh, opportunity to do like, good things. Let's not make it go to waste. Amen to that. Thanks very much again. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Au revoir tout le monde. Ça m'a fait plaisir. Bye-bye. Uh, so that brings us to our next break. We'll see you again in uh, five minutes for our next sector roundtable, focusing on tourism and hospitality, and that will start at uh, around 11.20, uh, give or take. So see you soon.